Hi guys, thank you so much for watching Mama Faya Tarot. If you can tell from my eyes, it's been an extremely long Monday. Um, and this is the Monday as a hotline psychic. <laughs> uh, it's been a very long day. But I will be back with astrology readings and some true crime. There's some major glare happening with the glasses, but I'm doing the best I can. I will be back with some True Crime Tuesdays, um, probably on Thursday, because today was so wild on the hotlines. Um, I loved it because I'm just popping out readings like you wouldn't believe, but it's also really tiring. And the number one thing that I get as to why that person you want in your life is not committing to you, number one. Especially if you're a woman and you're wondering about a dude, it's because he doesn't feel like he can take care of you. That's the number one reason. Like, out of, like, I would say 80% of calls tonight were about that. Um, and I'm going to tell you about the 1% of calls that I got tonight that is keeping me up tonight. And keeping me recording this video I do want to show you the sweetest fattest cat in the world too though because look at that I, I we he needs to lose weight I realize that because we do have a very healthy cat but we also have a very unhealthy cat <laughs> but my cats aren't the issue it's more the human race that I have a problem with um, I love you guys so much I love human beings. I want you guys to love each other better. And I, what I want women more than anything to understand is, number one, that the right guy will change for the right chick and they will commit to you right away if they want to be with you. If they are just having sex with you and not doing any more and saying they don't want a relationship, chances are they can't take care of you. There's a huge chance that if you're watching my channel and you're spiritually evolved and you're watching tarot and you're doing all the work, chances are it's your partner that's the problem. I hate to say it, but that is a true statement. Um, there was nothing more important in my spiritual development than my four years of celibacy. I was, seriously, no masturbation, no sex, no nothing. Four fucking years of no sexual activity whatsoever. And it was because, and I wrote a book. I wrote a whole fucking novel. I got better. Um, I developed my psychic gifts. I became a better mother and it was all so that I could figure out who I was I took four years to figure myself out and that was after being with complete losers who were either so 90% of the time it's that they don't feel they can take care of you so they're not committing to you but they're just getting sex because it's fun to hang out with you because you're a high priestess and an empress and you can take good care of them and they know your marriage material but they're not going all the way for you. They're not willing to label the relationship. You know? Um, then there's this other percentage which I would think like 2 or 10%, I don't fucking know, who are getting used women mainly but there are a lot of men a lot of men who are getting used for what they can do for someone so i'd say some women are getting used now it's like sometimes i feel like it's 50 50 on the calls i get i'm not gonna lie more women call me but i get a lot of calls from men too who are getting used by women that suck so much and then, like, so I'd say that's 10%. 90% of the reason, though, is that they don't feel like they can take care of you. They don't feel good enough for you. 
but they feel like they can F you, basically. You know, like, that's good enough. And if they never put a label on the relationship, it's fine. You know, it's very 1990s, if you ask me. And then, you know, there's that other, what, so what did I say, 90 and 10%? That's 100%. <laughs> My math may be a little off. But there is definitely that 1% of the population that will totally fucking see your worth and commit to you from the very beginning. And that 1%, you know, if you feel the same way about them, that's the caveat. You have to feel the same way about them in order for it to, like, fully fucking work. If you don't feel 100% the same way, you know, and you just feel secure, especially if you're a woman, it's not going to work. You're not going to be happy. You know, it's got to be reciprocal 100%. And in order for that person, whether they're male or female or if they, it doesn't really fucking matter the genitalia, that person has to feel secure in themselves in order to commit to me, commit to you. If they are not committing to you, it's 90% of the time, it's because they don't feel good enough for you. And they don't feel like they can take care of you. And that's why they're not committing to you. And so, just know that if you're in this 90th percentile, that's a lot of mother effers. That's a lot. Like, at least with the amount of people I talk to, it seems like so many people are trying to get people who don't love them to love them. When you can just focus on finding someone who will love you for exactly who you are and they'll commit you. Like if someone wants to be with you and they feel secure in themselves, they will 100% commit to you from the very beginning. Now, I have been, I've run through the gamut. I, I feel like I've done it all. I'm married and divorced. I've been with that dude who's used me for a place to live. I'm serious. I have been with that dude who has used me for sex multiple times. And I've been with the dude who is willing to commit to me. I've been proposed to you. And I even married a dude who didn't even propose to me. I just got pregnant with this kid and his dad, my dad, said marry her. So he did. So good boy. He tried his best. I've been through it. And I promise you that there's only so much you can do to get someone to commit to you when they've made it clear that it's not going to happen and they've chosen someone else or they clearly only come in for sex, that's when it's time to shove it off. Really. Like, and it's, you have to have those boundaries early on. Um, and not letting sex rule the emotion. Because that's where, especially females, or those who come from the feminine place. So... There are loads of males who are a little more feminine and there are loads of females who are a little more on the masculine. And it doesn't speak to who you are, but what you need to accept is that your relationship doesn't follow natural gender roles. And if one is more feminine and one is more masculine, regardless of genitalia, you have to respect that. And generally speaking, it tends to be the feminine who, and you can be male and be feminine. You know, you can be the one who's more in touch with your femininity. And I hate that society, especially the heterosexual males who are more in touch with their femininity or more in touch with their emotion, like, they are demonized somehow in this, like, 
world, and I don't understand how that happened, but okay. Um, if I could change that, I would, guys, I promise. But what I will say is that if the person wants to be with you, they will 100% commit to you, they will put a label on it, they will make it clear that you're the only one they want to be with. And I've seen it time and time again. And right after my celibacy, I ended up with the biggest commitment phobe in my life. So, I will tell you, be very careful if you are coming out of celibacy. Because sometimes you attribute feelings with sex. Like, and you don't really even realize if you're that far along in your spiritual development and you have gone that long without that or you have gone that long without anything. I mean, celibacy can be a lot of things, you know, celibacy can be alcohol as well. But I think more than anything, that four year time period of really figuring out who I am and then that time with the commitment phobe, that actually made me a way better psychic. And I knew that, that that one dude, there was one dude in my life who wouldn't commit to me that I didn't want to be with. Like that I wanted to be with and he didn't want to be with. He didn't really want to be with me. And you want to know why the only reason he didn't want to be with me was because he couldn't take care of me. He had two baby mamas and a lot of debt. And there was nothing he could do for me that I couldn't do for myself. And so you need to really, if there is someone who you're attracted to, but they're not on your level in that way, it's simply, it's probably not worth exploring. I'm going to tell you that right now. If you, if you, you like, it just like attracts like and you need to bring someone in on your level no matter what le that level is I don't know what that level is whatever your level is bring a person in on your level and you'll be fine it's that's what everybody has to like understand is that like you gotta you can't just because you have feelings for someone doesn't mean you're meant to be with that person. Feelings can be really deceiving. And you've got to search your intuition. What is your intuition telling you about this person? Even if your feelings are telling you you care about this person, what is your gut telling you? You know? What does... There's a lot. You've got to, like, weigh it all in. You know, and um, the mind is a crazy place and, and the heart will convince the mind that we are supposed to be with someone just because we felt something when we were having sex with them. Because we're crazy. And we're human. And we do that. Especially feminines, but masculines too. Don't really fucking matter, to be honest with you. And if you're pining over someone who doesn't seem to want to commit to you, I really do encourage you to let that shit go. And really go with who you know. Go with who you know cares. And go with who your heart knows you care about. 100%. If it ain't 100%, it ain't worth it. You know? And, I don't know, I just feel like, unless that person is texting you back right away, unless that person is like, yeah, let's label this motherfucker, let's label this right now, because I want to be with you, it's not worth it, but be careful of the narcissist, because a narcissist will be like, they'll say whatever they want to say, you know, and they'll do whatever they gotta do to get you so they're like yeah you're my girlfriend even though they're like fucking 12 people also there is an issue in this world of hypersexuality and mental illness there are people in this world who use sex as a gateway and not as 
I guess gateway isn't the right word, but that's the word I think of. Like it's a gateway to release for them in the same way that some people use a drug. If your partner is bipolar and hypersexuality is a very strong symptom of bipolar, that's something you're gonna wanna discuss with your partner. So if you start dating someone and they're like, hey, I have bipolar, you know, like, and sometimes I get hypersexual, like that's a thing that you need to talk about openly with that person. But it doesn't mean that that's something that's anything wrong with them, like, like that's like, don't get in a relationship with them. It does mean that, you know, that person does do things and they act out in a sexual manner. It doesn't mean that their relationship with you is... And that's where, like, as a hotline psychic, I get a little mixed up. And as someone who struggles with PTSD and who has been diagnosed with some crazy shit that I don't believe is, you know, it just, I've done a lot of research on a lot of things. And it does seem that hypersexuality is a symptom of bipolar. It is a symptom that some people give into. And that is something that I, I have seen on the hotlines too. And that's the unique perspective that the hotlines as a psychic versus someone who just pulls tarot on YouTube. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not downing people who have not gotten that kind of experience. But I will tell you, it gives you a type of experience, like personal readings give you the type of experience that a therapist has. Because people will call a hotline psychic and tell them anything, you know. But I promise you, 90% of my calls are about romance. And most of them are about, you know, how does someone feel? And if you're trying to guess how someone feels, chances are it's not the right relationship. So, in loving relationships, we know how the person feels. And if you don't know how your partner feels about you, it's a sure sign that it's probably time to end it. Um, and also, um, you know, if that person isn't committing to you, don't necessarily take that as, um, don't take that personal, you know? see that that person most likely feels like you're most likely out of their league that you can't that they can't take care of you that you're not good enough like i mean not that you're not good enough that they're not good enough they feel like they're not good enough and but you're taking it like you're not good enough and i guess that's my point is like they're projecting those feelings onto you without even saying you're not good enough. Just by saying, I don't want to put a label on this. But if they say they don't want to put a label on it, that's your cue to run right the fuck out the door. I'm telling you right now. All right, guys. I love you so much. Oh, and I promised I'd tell you about that 1% of calls. That's keeping me up tonight. So I want to make you guys aware of the fact that there are a whole mess of human beings out there who have developmental disabilities, either autism, Down syndrome, unspecified, um, weird diagnoses from the 70s I don't want to repeat on YouTube that I've seen in some people's charts. And I got a call tonight about someone in that community getting abused. And I want to make you, my viewers aware that 80%, if not more, of people with developmental disabilities are sexually abused. 80%. Um, 
Well, I've only gotten two calls on the hotlines about it. I know there's a lot of hotline clients that have experienced it most likely and just never told me. And abuse of those with developmental disabilities absolutely ruins me. And awareness of that really, I feel like, needs to be talked about more. Because most of them cannot speak for themselves. A lot of my clients were nonverbal or could not speak, like could not verbalize how they were feeling or what was going on with them. And what we as a society need to understand is that there are so many people in that community that have been hurt on top of not getting the care they need. And I just really hope you guys are able to, you know, if you're looking for a job and the local day program is looking for people, please go. take some time like volunteer your time at a special olympics softball game or something if you're not a pedophile you know and I swear it'll change your life it'll change everything for you so I don't know I just wanted to throw that little tidbit in there that like there's a whole community of people that you may not know about that get victimized a lot and um, I hope that changes and I hope more people speak out against it and if you've made it this far Thank you so much for watching my little PSA about my people. Because any time I've ever gotten a call about that, which is twice so far, and that's all I need, it's twice too many, I can't sleep at night. So I figured I'd tell you guys about 90% of the calls I get, why that person isn't committing to you. And throw in this little tidbit, because it's the only reason I'm awake. Alright, have a great night, guys. I love you. Thank you for watching. Take care.